Greetings and salutations! Welcome to Marsh Crafting 101, episode 2. In this episode, we're going to go over a little bit of the Buster Sword construction, following up from the previous episode, and then we're going to move on to Aaron Bjorn's shield and my shield, and then a little bit more of the Buster Sword. In the meantime, watch, learn, like, and subscribe. Alright, so next day, this is where the jump cuts are going to be, so get the bitching out now. <laughs> the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the bottom of this, or the surface of this, abrasive for sandpaper. Then we're going to apply the dab, then we're going to use a blow dryer to actually use the hot cold method to get rid of the excess liquid and cause it to just it keep on. Drugs. the next step here where we're going to actually do the hot cold method. First we're going to start on cool just to get it a little dried up. Giraffe pimp. Drugs. Now we're going to go to the hot method. As you're doing this, you want to keep an eye on your dap. When it starts to bubble up, that's when most of the actual liquid is... <laughs> Anyways. That's when most of the actual liquid is gone and all you have left is the adhesive itself. At which point, that's when you actually can join your two layers. So, as you can see in this part here, uh, we had a little bit of a uh, little fuck up. <laughs> One of the flaps on the inner layer actually touched down on the outer layer, and as I keep saying and keep saying and keep saying, with the hot cold method, it's for like instant adhesion. Instant adhesion. And when that happens, your shit sticks together. And that's what happened. Me and Pat had to quickly separate that and then get it back together. But we got it. And we got it right. Which you'll see. But that's why I keep swearing by the hot and cold method, though. If you've got a small project or something you're working on that could, you know, be easily done by one person, you don't have to worry so much about it because you can get your parts lined up pretty well on your own. But when you got this center layer of a four-layer thick blade, you kind of need another person there because if you don't, well, shit like this happens. And even with that second person, shit like this happens. So, yeah. Okay. 
Well, is it cool? No! God damn it! Take that Suck it, this. Shut the fuck up, Brownie. Come back to your game now. Hey, this is half your project, too, you know, right? That's why I'm super tired. Wanna fire it up? Segment one of the dabbing of giraffe pen. Giraffe pen. Drugs. Day two of cluster sword construction. This is my buddy Pat. Pat, say hi. Alright, so we've got side one and side two of the cluster sword adhered and ready to go. So now what we're going to do, seeing as how I had to use a different form of camp mat, this one's got a more textured top. See how this has got that bumpy textured top? We're going to sand the crap out of it until it's smoother like this so that the gap will adhere better and we'll get a better seal. After we're done sanding on this part, we're going to do a light sanding on this. Then we're going to place it in the core and one side, dap it, both sides of the core, roll it around in there until it's completely covered in dap. Then we're going to Hit it with the heat, hit the other side with the heat, and then press it on and let it sit overnight. And then tomorrow we'll start the grinding. So, enjoy.
Have you heard? Yes. Yes, I have. Because I was under the impression you had heard. I was under the impression he had not heard. No, I had it. I had heard. Well, no. Patrick, have you heard the word? Yes. Have yes, you? I have. Are you sure? Yep. But, Will, have you? Have you heard the word? Why, well, no, my love. Would you please enlighten me? Oh, well, I love her, her, her. Well, a bird, 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 bird is a word. Well, a bird, 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 bird is a word. This is how it's gonna look. Chopper, 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 chopper. It's not legal. So yet. Oh dude, right now I could literally just smooth that back edge. And put some carpenter tape along this. Put an edge on it and go, hey bang, what? Go whack some people with it. And watch people just immediately go, oh, God! Eight feet, eight and a half inches. That's how big this sword's going to be. Eight feet, eight and a half inches. You're welcome, Ben. Hit somebody with this. I don't even care if it's legal or not. Hit somebody with this. <laughs> now that I agree with. Well, I am missing footage from when we combined both sides of the blade. That kind of just went poof. However, we, again, hot and cold method, after applying more dap, combined the parts of the blade, it became a solid blade. The next part of this segment, uh, got my nephew Lemire to come and help me out. Uh, he was really excited to help Uncle Will making the buster sword. He was super excited because his dad's a big nerd too, as is his mom. So he, in turn, is also a nerd, and he wanted to help Uncle Will out. So. cat and the next part of this segment is going to be where I edge the blade and that is all thanks to a buddy of mine from AmpGuard, Sir Navarin. Um he let me borrow his belt sander so that I could do this enjoy the rest of this ah! Arizona X here in the LARP crafting 101 segment of my show on my channel here with my nephew Lemire he's gonna be my little assistant today so Lemire what are we gonna be building today the Buster Sword. All right, and uh, do you know what game that's from? Final Fantasy VII. Good boy, knuckle up. All right, so get your PPE on, your personal protective wear, your personal protective equipment. All right, now we're gonna get to work. Ready to get to work? All right, let's do this. So what I need you to do, I'm gonna be Standing this on the edge, so I need to hold this still for me, okay? So I'm going to twist and let it move. Make it, 
faster, stronger. More than power, power, never. Ever after work is over. Work it, make it, do it, make sense. Side number two, electric boogaloo. Yeah. Ready for side number two? Yeah. All right, let's do this. Anyways, so the sword has finally been edged. Not done yet. <laughs> Anyways, so it's fully edged. So today I'm going to be working on multiple projects. Working on my buddy Aaron Bjorn's shield, my shield, Bishop's short sword, and uh, this big, beautiful bastard right here which is a project for uh, Randy Miller, AKA Sir Bane, not to be confused with Azura Bane. And uh, yeah, here's all the other projects. So uh, here we go. So we've done the blue and uh, now we're moving on to the white just to smooth some of that out, get any excess blue that has blown over to it off of there. And uh, then we're gonna move on to clear plastic dipping the boss while it dries. Now the blue and white look a little better. I'm gonna let that uh, dry off to the side for a minute. And we're gonna hit the boss with some clear plastic. Now those of you who aren't familiar with clear plastic, this does not go on 100% clear. It ends up looking like this. So uh, when you're when you're doing this, it kind of looks a little questionable, but uh, it's not bad. It's not bad for what it does. And uh, when you get to that point where you've been spraying it, spraying it, spraying it, it kind of looks like a like something out of a bukkake film. So, uh, 
your interest in cause we're blowing up overseas Making money, money, money Yes, yes, yes Steps out of every cent Don't fuck you with the bell I'm a upper Drag each get fucked like a sucker Yeah, my girl Yeah, my girl Yeah, my motherfucker No big deal Yo, cause your money gets thrown at me Now I'm having so much fun that I can't even go to sleep Yo, that day Alright, so now we're gonna take a break Let that dry for a minute Hang in there but Now that the, uh Shield boss is dried. I'm um, gonna move on to the next project while that cures for the next 24 hours. And I'm gonna be plastipping the outside of my shield to smooth it out and get it finished up and get it ready and primed for when we add the paint. So, for this portion, we're gonna use some of the actual like paint on plastic dip rather than the spray so we can get a little bit thicker and actually fill in all the gaps. A lot faster. And all we gotta do is let this bad boy dry overnight. held this shield together for all these years, I'll say that much, so if you do, son of a bitch. Hmm. Pick up where we were there. This stuff is the pounded metal paint. Kind of gives you a little bit of a preview of what it looks like when it's all done. Uh, 
This is going to make the shield look like it's been weathered and beaten down, which is fine because it has a few divots in it and uh, what look like to be slashes. And I'll probably do some fine tuning and actually carve in some slashes to it to make it look more weathered and more battle damaged. So for now, uh, we're going to go ahead and get on with the painting. <laughs> painting the back is steel as well so that's why I'm trying to get it a little bit under there so that when I do flip it over eventually it will you know be partially done so we're gonna set this off to the side and let it dry for a while and in the meantime we're gonna move on to dapping the edges of the other shield Now, for those of you at home who are probably wondering, why the fuck does he have a hair dryer? Oh my god, who the hell cares? Well... <laughs> when you dab and you go to adhese something, most of the time you have a long set time. Well, in this case, I have a way of getting the outside of it dry, or dry edge to its tacky point, and then hitting it with heat, causing most of the excess liquid to evaporate, and therefore leaving mostly just the adhesive. Now I may be an idiot, but there is one thing I am not, sir, and that, sir, is an idiot. Now I'm gonna do that on one revolution around the shield, and then the next layer I'm just gonna let sit. And that will dry. Once it's dry enough, we'll move it indoors. Why? Now, when the fumes air out. And then we'll move on to the buster. So, time for a time lapse. It's got its dap on a good portion of the edge. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit it with some cool air and then some hot air to solidify it and then move on to the next section and basically, you know, rinse and repeat until I've gotten it completely around and then I'm going to do one more layer around it after that. I'm going to let it just air dry and it should be good. see this thing is uh, it's deteriorating it's falling apart that's gonna happen a lot with the dap and uh, so, so you always make sure you got plenty of spares I got a whole box full of these over there so always make sure when you're dapping you have some spare brushes because the normal foam brush will 
fall apart and disintegrate on you. So, just a little helpful tip. See, now it's at the point where I can run my fingers across it. It's not leaving any residue, it's not sticking. It's all thanks to that cold, hot, cold method. Which, uh, if I get a chance, I'll give you a close up. As you can see, it looks completely covered. And it's like just tacky, but then you get over here, there's no tack. A little bit of tack there. As it goes, hit it with the cool air. Hit it with the cool air, and that'll start to make it a little tacky. Then you hit it with the heat, and you're gonna see the uh, the dap bubble up a little bit. That's perfectly normal, that's fine. Uh, just keep pressing the bubble in with the heat. Like, don't actually put your finger on it, try to press it in, but hit it with the hot air, keep pressing it in, and what it'll do is it'll help level out the uh, surface, which in some of this you can see where it's getting a little smoother. That's because now I'm causing it to harden and fill in the gaps. So. Then you hit it with cold again to just finish sealing it up. And by the time you get back around to it, it shouldn't be sticky anymore. So another thing you wanna make sure of when you're getting the dap in here, you wanna put enough to actually fill in the little gaps, the little holes, so that when you do go to dry it, it's gonna leave a smoother texture and you have a lot less sanding. <laughs> on the rest of the craft foam to the edge of the blade, the buster sword. Might even start putting uh, craft foam over the larger flat part. We'll see. Depends on if we run out of damage. Yeah. piece once I get all of those done then I'll do the last piece on the tip and that should be the entirety of the blade
All right. Looking up close. That shit is literally right on the line. It's a little bit crooked here, but I can fix that with a little bit of uh, the spare stuff that I just cut off. Um, and I'm going to continue this process down the entire thing. So, uh, yeah. Now for the speed roll. It's been done across the entirety of the blade. 
can see the cap is kind of sealed now and it's going to be smooth all the way around. Once I get the plastic on, all the actual dividing lines and little ridges will go away. That's it for uh, Marshcraft 101 for today. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching and I hope you learned something from it. And I'd like to see any projects that you guys do. Go ahead and send me inbox pictures. I'll feature some of the other uh, pictures of other people who do LARPing, weapons and stuff like that. But as you submit them, I want to see them get better, just like I'll continue to get better with my crafting for you guys. Until then, see you on X. Signing off.